Okay, so hopefully we can hear each other. All right. So um, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Lilani Cawthon, running Council News Media. And I'm Melissa Lobo, Chief Academic Officer for Instructure, the Makers of Campus. Yes. Okay, so um, long been a follower of the work of Instructure. So I want to ask first, you guys have done some studies with a goal. Tell me the goal. So we've done some uh, research studies around the top tools being used by K-12 school districts around the country to really understand what's being used, how it's being used, and how we can help make sure it's being used in the best way possible. Awesome. Okay, so you are looking at utility and use. Does that affect the product for you? You guys have a product roadmap being affected by this work? Yeah, so utility and use is critical for us to understand because it helps us really gauge where our teachers, educators, school districts at and how can we help best meet them with our products and solutions. It also specifically helps us with one of our products called Learn Platform that is um, about building highly effective and efficient learning ecosystems. I love it. Okay, and we should tell people where we're at. We're in the middle of the ISTE conference. Yes, we are. In the middle of the exhibit hall. It's Holy June cow. what right now? It's the 27th? 27th, I so think. like, what day? We've been here forever. We've got days to go. <laughs> people are super loud and noisy around here. Yep. Hopefully all the sound will pick this up. Okay, so tell me a couple of the hot points of what you found. Yeah, so this is the seventh year we've done this report. And every year we've seen an increase in the number of tools being used by a district, by a teacher, and by a student. So for example, only over 2,700 2, tools are being used by districts on average in a year. That's a lot of tools. For, faculty, for teachers and students, it's um, you know, around 42, 49. It's a lot of tools that yeah. people are using every single day. We need yeah. to make sure they work, work well and serve their purpose. Yes. I am speculating they're doing that because they feel like they have to do something to engage Generation Alpha, who doesn't understand why words are coming out of your human mouth. They just want to, <laughs> they just want to text you or play a video, right? Yeah. Is that part of it? It absolutely is. They're using a lot more tools because they do want to engage students. They want to yeah. figure out how can they meet students where they're at. They're also using a, um, more tools we found in our research this year because of generative AI. And it's surfacing new ways to think about how do you interact with students? How do you teach more effectively? And I think they're doing some experimentation around those tools. Yeah. I'm already bored with generative AI. I don't... <laughs> It's like the word I know today. that's blasphemy. Somebody's no. going to come over and hit me right now. Um, because it's all anybody wants to talk about, right? But there are like seven kinds of AI that are all now emerging in the market. The generative AI is just a surface level user tool. Yep. There's so much that's going to go on behind the scenes. In fact, I'm heavily invested in spatial temporal AI, yeah. which you and I should talk about later, not right now. Absolutely. But then there's embedded recommendations engine AI, IoT, all of the algorithmic data logic AI, the machine learning AI, there's just a lot of them. Where do you think that, did you guys ask about that? Are you talking about that yet? We didn't get into specifically what kind of AI is being used in this report, but um, what the report does surface is that AI is being used to solve bigger problems okay. that we're all trying to face, right? So I'm, I'm like you, I'm a little bored of generative AI, I'll be honest. <laughs> Let's because go tell anyone else, although we're going to air this. Here we are. Uh -huh. Because it's, 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 it's the bigger problems we're trying to solve in teaching and learning. Yeah. It's not necessarily the underlying tooling that should get the, the showcase. It should be, hey, we, we see what we need to do, and we need to figure out the best way to get there for, for students today. Yeah. I feel like what's really an underlying theme is people trying to do true personalization. You're feeling that. And yet the logistical nightmare with that number of tools and the variance in the human population is getting even greater now that we have so much immigration. Yep. Um, are you sensing a little bit of people going crazy out there? I would say yes, because they have so much at their disposal to be using, and then and they have little time. So how do I figure out what I should be using, where and when, which was also a focus of the report, was really to understand what are some of the big key trends that we're seeing, things like 
you need evidence back tooling. Things like you need to think about interoperability to maybe help people go less crazy because it can help them shape some of their decision making around what I should use and where. Yeah. Do you also feel that some of the districts are, because during the pandemic, the reins were let you loose of all oh, yeah. like what you do with your lesson planning. And yeah. there was a lot less textbook use. Yes. And so it was all like, let's just, the superintendents would come in and be like, well, everything's free on the internet, right? So like, let's just do that. And, and, and then they were like, everybody, every man for themselves, every woman for themselves in the classroom, do your own lesson planning, which most teachers are not trained instructional designers. Are you feeling like the reins are coming back into the hands of the districts where they're like, I'm going to be a little bit more prescriptive. I'm going to go beyond the curriculum map. I'm not only going to hand you the curriculum map in terms of when to teach what, when, but I'm going to go all the way into the lesson plan. Are you seeing that? Um, we're seeing that in some places where they are leaning in on, this is what lessons, this is how we need you to think about implementing our curriculum or our, our content that we're using. We're also seeing them uh, start to rein in a little bit on what tools can you use uh, right. as teachers right. in order to protect students, quite frankly, yeah. and to protect teachers too in this. So it's a little bit of both. It's what are you using and how are you using it is where we're starting to see some reins being pulled. Yeah, I'm expecting it to go all the way. I think the yeah. pendulum swinging all the way back where it's going to be much more prescriptive. And the reason I think that is because the massive teacher shortage and the rise in gig teaching and tutoring. Yeah. So teachers are like, I can get a better salary on my own. I know schools right now that are offering teach for me for two hours online. I can double your salary. So I think that there's a fracturing coming in that. And that's going to mean that you don't know who you have teaching math tomorrow. So you've got to have all the tracks laid. Yeah. What yeah. do you think about that? Yeah, I think you also, I'll, I'll add to that in that we're seeing more and more teachers come into this space from non-teaching careers, yes. right? They're coming from industry. Yeah. And so, yeah, they may have that expertise in the subject area, but they've never been in a classroom before. So they're needing to help guide those teachers yeah. that are now coming into this classroom and yeah. needing to choose the right tools that are effective for them and the right content so that they can be successful. So I do see, I do see some of this needing to have some more control over what does the learning experience look like. Um, especially, you know, given all of the risks that can come from bad choices too. So what I'm hoping that we hear from you guys next year then. Okay. Deeper AI questioning. Okay. And also a deep questioning, because we've been doing this in our own research. Yeah. What is a teacher? We gave, we gave people a full scale and the definitions were all over the map, which is a fascinating outcome. We also asked the question, what is a student? And very, very, very few teachers can answer that question, which is remarkably interesting, right? Yeah. So I think there's, I think there's some more. Yeah. yeah. Of course there is. It's never ending. It's yeah. all like it's riding a bucking bronco. That's exactly right. Okay. So what else? What else do we need to know? I think the most important thing or the most important takeaways from the report are really about um, evidence is coming and it's here to stay. <laughs> you need to prove efficaciousness of your tooling in order to be most impactful. You need to be thinking about how to build seamless interoperable learning Stop. ecosystems. Yeah, you have to. I thought that was table stakes. It's still something that uh, vendors are grappling with and districts are grappling with. Oh yeah, I'm openly angry with a lot of publishers. I'm like, really? Do you think you're really an island on yourself? Do you realize there's nine thousand of you yes. calling on every single teacher and everything in school? Are you serious? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the final thing I'd say is we just need to figure out how to get technology into the hands of students that don't have access to bandwidth or the right tooling. So, for example, we're going to be releasing very shortly um, some capabilities around offline viewing. And that's to help get content. I think vendors need to be thinking about this. How do we reach all students? How do we truly think about accessibility and equity? I totally agree because I'm talking to a lot of rural schools and they're like, yes. you know, I already have to share a math teacher over 300 miles away. That's right. I have issues. Yeah, they have issues. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think this is a fun time to be alive in education because it's just really wild. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it feels like um, there's an acceptance of change. Maybe you're not loving change but you know it's coming, you're not dreading it. And I think there's an opportunity to experiment. Um, you yeah. know, that's that's new, we need that in order to really figure all this out. Yeah, yeah, well I'm proud of your work, thank you very Thank much. you. Thank you.